execution of a British school teacher. Gillian Gibbons is in jail for letting children call a teddy bear Mohammed. And a thousand demonstrators take to the streets. They say the 15-day sentence is too lenient. Also on tonight's programme, the victims of 7-7. All the families have sent graphic details of their injuries, even though they didn't ask for them. Firefighters pay their last respects to an enthusiastic and passionate colleague killed while tackling a warehouse blaze. Police receive the documents on Labour's disguised donations. The official inquiry has begun. Normally they're running around the set. We're just working mothers, basically. And from Spice Girls to Spice Mums, how touring the world needs every ounce of girl power. On BBC London, a dementia patient who accidentally hanged himself in a care home. The company responsible is fined. And how this hard-hitting AIDS campaign means nothing to London's young people. Good evening and welcome to the six o'clock news. The British teacher Gillian Gibbons, imprisoned in Sudan for letting her children call a teddy bear Mohammed, has been moved to another jail for her own safety. That's according to her lawyer. Around a thousand protesters have been demonstrating against her 15-day sentence, calling it too lenient. Some have even said she should be executed. Well, tonight there is a glimmer of hope for Gillian Gibbons. The Labour peer, Lord Ahmed, is on his way to Sudan to try to press for her early release. He's leading a private delegation which is expected to meet the Sudanese president. Our correspondent Adam Minot is in Khartoum for us tonight. Adam. Ben, yes, Gillian Gibbons' first day serving her sentence for insulting Islam by allowing her school children to name a teddy bear Islam, uh, name a teddy bear Mohammed, I beg your pardon, uh, has been a day of uh, silence from the Sudanese authorities here and the British, but a day of noise and anger on the streets of Khartoum. Insults to Islam in Sudan cannot go unpunished and unprotested, and hundreds poured out of Friday prayers in Khartoum to vent their anger on the streets. We cannot accept it from anybody. If they can do it in Europe, they cannot do it here in Sudan. But this was, for the most part, a good-natured protest. Banners were waved and sticks shaken but the smiling faces showed this was not a furious outpouring of anger. However, there's no question that some had been offended by Gillian Gibbons' insensitivity. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, we love him very much. And we have a big, uh, great red line in uh, talking about him. And she crossed the red line? Yes, yes. Most people in Khartoum were not up in arms. The court case has not received much media coverage. Many knew little of it, and some Sudanese even felt the prosecution of the 54-year-old schoolteacher had been an overreaction. Considerable diplomatic pressure is still being applied by Britain on the Sudanese government here in Khartoum. And I understand that the British authorities feel that there is still room for a compromise where Gillian Gibbons can be released ahead of serving her full 15-day sentence. The street protest lasted two hours, and it dissolved as quickly as it had started. It had the look of an orchestrated, almost theatrical event. As the streets echoed to the sounds of public demonstration, Gillian Gibbons began her prison term in an overcrowded women's jail in the capital. But it's understood she's now been moved to another location. And we understand, according to sources here, that she was moved for her own safety. And we've also heard tonight that diplomatic pressure has been ratcheted up a notch with the news that Lord Ahmed is leading a parliamentary delegation to Britain, which has set off. Back to you, Ben, in London. OK, Adam, many thanks. 